My guest is Dr. Aliyah Krum. Her work focuses on mindsets, how what we think and what we believe shapes the way that our physiology, our biology reacts as we discuss what mindsets are the number of different mindsets that exist, and how we can adopt mindsets that make us more adaptive, more effective, allow us to suffer less, and to perform better in all aspects of life. Welcome to Brian and Paul. My name is Brian, and I'm really excited to continue this review with Andrew Huberman, understanding neuroscience and biology to make progress in their lives with effective tools of their actions, thoughts, and behaviors. I personally find the work of Dr. Aliyah Crum to be among the most important work being done in the fields of biology and psychology and the interface of mind-body. Everything that she's done up until now and published, and indeed the work that she continues to do, has shaped everything within my daily routines, within my work routines, within my athletic routines. And we probably shouldn't be surprised by the fact that Dr. Crum works on all these things. She was not only an incredibly accomplished, tenured research professor, She's also a clinical psychologist, and she was also a Division I athlete and an elite gymnast at one period in her life. So she really walks the walk uh, in terms of understanding what mindsets are and applying them in different aspects of life. What is a mindset and what sort of purpose does it serve? Mindsets have been described or defined in a lot of ways. We define mindsets as core beliefs or assumptions that we have about a domain or category of things that orient us to a particular set of expectations, explanations, and goals. I can uh, distill it down for you. So mindsets are an assumption that you make about a domain. So take stress, for example, the nature of stress. What's your sort of core belief about that? Mindsets that we've studied about stress are, do you view stress as enhancing, good for you, or do you view it as debilitating and bad for you? Those mindsets, those core beliefs, orient our thinking. They change what we expect will happen to us when we're stressed, how we explain the occurrences that happen or unfold when we're stressed, and also change our motivation for what we engage in when we're stressed. So we have mindsets about many things, mindsets about stress, mindsets about intelligence, as Carol Dweck's work has shown, mindsets about food, mindsets about medicine, you name it. Uh, it's sort of distilling down those core assumptions that really shape and orient our thinking and action. This is why this topic is so amazing for me. To imagine this idea, I mean, let's understand some of these aspects of mentality, belief, identity, the law of attraction. Well, here, Aliyah Krum is going to discuss in many aspects how what we think and believe will truly impact how our bodies respond in many different ways, positively and or negatively. I've heard you say before that mindsets simplify life in some way by constraining the number of things that we have to consider. And it sounds to me like we can have mindsets about many things. What are some different mindsets? I think uh, many people are familiar with our colleague Carol Dweck's um, notion of growth mindset, that if we're not proficient at something that uh, we should think about not being proficient yet that we are on some path to proficiency. What are some examples of mindsets and how early do these get laid down or do we learn them from our parents? So maybe you could just flesh it out a bit for us in terms of what you've, what you've observed in your own science or your own life even. I think it's important with Carol Dweck's work, a lot of people kind of get focused on growth motivation and all these things, but her work really originated from thinking about what she called as implicit theories or core beliefs about the nature of intelligence or ability, right? So do you believe that your baseline levels of intelligence or your abilities are fixed, static, set throughout the rest of your life? Or do you believe that they can grow and change? Now, those are oversimplified <laughs> generalizations about the nature of intelligence. And the reality is, as it always is, complex, and it's a bit of both, and it's all these things. But as humans, we need these simplifying systems to help us understand a complex reality. So those assumptions that we jump to, oh, intelligence is fixed or intelligence is malleable, they help us to simplify this complex reality, but they're not inconsequential. They matter in shaping our motivation. And as she has shown, if you have the mindset that intelligence is malleable, you're motivated to work harder to grow your intelligence. If you have a setback in your learning, you think, okay, there's something there that I can grow and learn and build from. If you have the mindset that it's fixed, 
You know, why work harder at math if you don't think you're good at it? You know, in retrospect, it's pretty clear how these mindsets can affect our motivation. What our work has aimed to do is to expand the range of mindsets that we are studying, (laughs) focused on, and also understand and expand the range of effects that they have. By and large, we focused on mindsets in the domain of health and health behaviors. Uh, So I mentioned, you know, mindsets about stress. We've also looked at mindsets about food and healthy eating. So do you have the mindset that foods that are good for you, healthy foods, are disgusting and depriving? Or do you have the mindset that healthy foods are indulgent and delicious? could be a variety of different foods. You might have different thoughts about different healthy foods. But generally, people, at least in our culture in in the West, have this view that stress is debilitating, healthy foods are disgusting and depriving. And those mindsets, whether or not they're true or false, right or wrong, they have an impact. And they have an impact not just through the motivational mechanisms that Dweck and others have studied, but as our lab has started to reveal, they also shape physiological mechanisms by changing what our bodies prioritize and prepare to do. So those are just two examples, Mm -hmm. mindsets about stress, mindsets about food. We've looked at mindsets about exercise. Do you feel like you're getting enough or do you feel like you're getting an insufficient amount to get the health benefits you're seeking? Mindsets about illness. Do you view cancer as an unmitigated catastrophe or do you view cancer as manageable or perhaps even, even an opportunity? I've looked at mindsets about symptoms and side effects. Do you view side effects as a sign that the treatment is harmful? Or do you view side effects as a sign that the treatment is working? Again, these are sort of core beliefs or assumptions you have about these domains or categories. Uh, but they matter because they're shaping, they're synthesizing and simplifying the way we're thinking but they're also shaping what we're paying attention to, what we're motivated to do, and potentially even how our bodies respond. As we review these aspects of mindset over the next several episodes, I think it's really important that everybody focus on keeping in mind and asking themselves these questions. I'm sure you're going to learn a ton from this conversation, as did I, and come away with many, many actionable items that you can apply in your own life. You might want to just put in the back of your mind the question, what is my mindset about blank? So for instance, ask yourself, what is my mindset about stress? What is my mindset about food? What is my mindset about exercise? What is my mindset about relationships of different kinds? Because in doing that, you'll be in a great position to extract the best of the information that Dr. Crum presents and indeed to adapt those mindsets in the way that is going to be most beneficial for you. Focusing on these questions and understanding mindset is something that will help everyone be able to make progress in their lives. We really appreciate you watching. If you like the content, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel as we continue to drive these ideas, actions, thoughts, and behaviors to help people improve in their lives and make progress. 